I want to move ahead to this because uh, here's where I'm at. And this is what I said earlier in the show. And I'm going to say it to you again right now. If you would have told me, if this was a 30, uh, 30 for 30, Broads, and you said, what if I told you that the Phillies were going to go to New York in a four-game series of the match and they're going to take two out of four? I would have told you, all right, way to go, Phillies. But then watching those games and the way they played out and how they could have swept the Mets, really, uh, it only makes me more disappointed. What say you about this uh, four-game set with the Mets the Phillies just wrapped up? I don't know if I'm more frustrated with Reese Hoskins' comments or Joe Girardi, but here's what I'll say to all this. We witnessed Matt Klintak and Gabe Kapler, right? And it looked like they had no idea what they were doing out there where we demanded change. Mm. And they bring in Dave Dombrowski, proven winner. I don't love the way he goes about it because it always blows up afterwards, but he's got plenty of rings on his fingers and gotten to the World Series like he's been there. Yeah. So Joe Girardi, proven winner. Doesn't seem it. Seems like he's worse than Gabe Kapler. So – when I analyze this Phillies organization, you're telling me two proven lifers, two proven winners look worse than Klentak and Gabe Kapler. I have to start peeling back the layers here where it goes farther than just Reese Hoskins and Alec Boehm not knowing how to defend. It goes farther than Hector Neris. It goes farther than all these issues we see on the field because there's no way that Joe Girardi should be looking this Pathetic. It looks like he's never seen baseball in his life. So when I watch him speak, I almost wonder, and I'm not a conspiracy guy, but when we watch Doug Peterson talk, where we knew Jeffrey Lurie was really holding him hostage almost. Yeah. Yeah. Is Joe Girardi being held hostage? Because how is Dombrowski and Joe looking worse than Klentak and, and Gabe Kapler? That's literally impossible. It, it, it takes me another direction. Uh, it takes me to John Middleton. And it takes exactly. me to John Middleton, and it takes me to the also just the way this franchise is set up. It's like wow, you have these baseball lifers and like or hate Gabe Kapler. He was still a ball player, and I remember talking to him about the way he was going to manage and mixing analytics and taking his ball play. You know, actually his 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 time in Major League Baseball, playing the game, front office, all that, and then meshing that with the numbers. And he's like, oh yeah, it's got to be that 50-50 balance and making sure that uh, you know you're making the right decisions uh, that at the right time, that type of thing. And I watch the same thing now with Dombrowski. I watch the same thing with Joe Girardi. And I'm like, is J- is this is the franchise just making these people stupid? Is it the pinstripe, red pinstripes? What is it? <laughs> Maybe. I almost wonder because Dombrowski's an old school guy. And this would go against the people that look, there's a there's a, a group of individuals that hate analytics so much. I watch the Rays play. I watch the Dodgers play. They're doing just fine. So it's not analytics that are right. miserable. But I wonder. Is Joe Girardi and Dave Dombrowski not using analytics? How many times have I seen Zach Eflin get yanked for no reason? And then you put in a pitcher that's now lefty-righty. I mean, I'm watching Joe go lefty-righty, righty-lefty. What are we doing? So is it now to the point where they're trying to get away from analytics? And I don't know. I I just – there's no analytics that would tell you go lefty-righty, righty-lefty and use these. So – are they not using analytics? And that's why they look like they don't know what they're doing, which would go against the whole narrative of analytics are stupid. But I, I'm trying to look for answers because the decisions being made are little league managerial 101 stuff. That's, oh, it's, that's it's below mistake. analytics. When you think yeah. about it, when you think about lefty, lefty, it's like that's not analytics. I remember that when I was seven years old thinking, watching baseball with my dad, being like, oh, you're going for the lefty, lefty matchup. And I'm like, oh, that makes sense. I didn't need a yeah, booklet like and didn't figure Bradley. that out. Archie Bradley, right-hander. Let's go to the. Let's go to Kyle Schwarber here. So, uh, uh, oh, second pitch bomb. How many times has a pinch hitter hit a home run against the Phillies? It's and it feels sick. like Farzee. Aaron Ruff. I mean, it's sickening. Farzee, it's sickening. I wasn't expecting. Two things I wasn't expecting. Hockey leading it off and Darren Ruff being referenced. You, my friend, you. Um, all right. Let me ask you this. So let's get to the Hoskins comments here. First off, uh, let's just address this. Um, I didn't know Alec Bohm's nickname was Bomer. How did we not know that already? Yeah, that's an interesting one. You would think that maybe someone, pro- as a hockey guy, right? E R Y. I mean, that's something that you throw out there all the time. It's just natural, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think someone would have caught that. <laughs> Look, I get what he's saying. I understand that he doesn't want to be the highlight when he played so bad and everybody else, play- and somebody else played well. He doesn't want to take away from that. 
But there's no limiting what the media, talk show hosts, whatever, are going to be saying about how poorly he played defensively in this series. Nothing. Nothing's going to take away from that. The Phillies stink. Come back to me, Reese, when you don't stink. You guys are a bad, bad baseball team. Right now, you're sitting fourth in the division. You have a horrendous record on the road. What do you want us to say, Reese? We love watching the this brand of baseball. We want this to be baseball every summer. This is a horrendous version of baseball. We have every right. And to act as if these media members, Jim Salisbury, Zalek, anyone who covers the team, right. isn't going to talk about how well Zach Eflin pitched against DeGrom. That's a joke. Of course they're going to mention that because nobody gets hit. Nick Maton's out there is getting hits on DeGrom. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. But you had your you had your glasses on your head and didn't catch a baseball at first <laughs> base. And then the next day, you can't field a line drive. And here's one thing that I can't stand. How many times am I going to hear this? Well, that was a tough play to make. It's a tough play to make because he stinks at defense. All these other first basemen make these plays left and right, these tough plays. But for Reese, these are all tough plays. They're tough plays because you stink at defense. Trade them. We got <laughs> we got a third baseman who can't play third. We got a point guard that can't shoot. And we got an offensive lineman who can dunk. This is the state of Philadelphia sports right now. See, Alec Bohm, what happened to I, – I like Bohm offensively. He's hitting somewhere along the lines of – Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Are you talking about Bomer? Yes, Bomer, Bo of course. Bomer, yeah. Yeah. Bomer. He's got four home runs, Farzi. I, I mean, look, I think he can hit the other way. He can go the other way with it. He, he feels comfortable with two strikes when he's in his rhythm. He's got four home runs. While I'm watching Tatis hit three homers in one day, he's got 25. Vlad Guerrero Jr., there's not – well, I want to ask you a question. I'm now the interviewee. Interviewer, <laughs> bring it, interviewer. bring it, bring it. If and don't lie to me. If the answer is no one, say no one. Who on this team, when they're at the plate, is must-watch television? Oh, nobody, nobody, nobody. nobody. I I was having this conversation the other day. Not I, even like, Bryce Harper. Ever? <laughs> yeah, I mean, when he's playing, Bryce Harper missed what his twentieth game yesterday. So, like, I was having this conversation yesterday or last week. I think it was with uh, Jack McCaffrey, of the Delco Times. And it was like everybody in this lineup, I would gladly go get nachos. Like if I'm at the game, I will gladly go to concession stands and get my helmet full of nachos and have my way with that and, and still feel like I'm not missing anything. The only the only person that would keep me in my seat is probably Zach Wheeler when he's actually pitching. Bottom half of the inning at, at, at uh, home games, guess where you can find me? The nacho stand. That's where you can you find me. You know what me. my answer would have been? And it's, it's sad. Everything's sad today. Uh, Gene Segura, a 300 single hitter. I remember him. Been, yeah, that would have been my answer. I, it's it's great. And, you know, it's it's telling you something, too, because, look, I'll never go back and take away the Bryce Harper contract. I think it was valid. His AAV, you look at all these other contracts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five mil, it's not that crazy. But uh, I'll tell you what, he, and maybe it's because the team stinks, but uh, he, he does not pop like I thought he was going to pop.